Just how rude has life become? And just how much is the tone of our politics to blame? Our cover story is reported by Martha Teichner. Does it sometimes seem as if our politics has us all backed into our ideological corners? Does it seem as if insults and name calling? I call him Little Marker, Little Marker. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Have taken the place of civil dialogue, that incivility has gone viral. You should not be wearing that in the United States of America. This is what I'm wearing, guys. Whether it's coming from the President of the United States. Well, we have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. Or somebody in a restaurant. And my guess is they're not documented. So my next call is to ICE to have each one of them kicked out of my country. You may be disturbed by it all. Why do you hate us? Because we're Mexicans? But should you be alarmed? Even that's a touchy subject. I think the country is in crisis. New York Times columnist Michelle Goldberg recently wrote that it's less a result of a breakdown in civility than a breakdown of democracy. I think the demand for civility can be used as a tool of oppression when it only goes in one direction, when you demand civility from the ruled, but you don't demand civility from the rulers. An unapologetic liberal, Goldberg thinks it's just fine that presidential spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders was not welcome at the Red Hen restaurant. I was asked to leave because I work for President Trump. We are allowed to disagree, but we should be able to do so freely and without fear of harm. And Goldberg thinks it's just fine. The California Democrat Congresswoman Maxine Waters has called for confrontation. You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. This shows to me this kind of surreal loop of disinformation that we're in. Trump then says, Maxine Waters has basically told people to attack members of my administration. She should be careful what she wishes for. If there is any threat of violence there, it's clearly coming from Donald Trump. And it wouldn't be the only time that Donald Trump has threatened, um, has kind of out, outright threatened protesters. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. So we're missing the point by talking about manners and civility. It's not a crisis that members of this administration can't go to a restaurant without being heckled. It's a crisis that those hecklers don't have any other way to reach them. Civility is a kind of basis for dialogue. It's hard to have dialogue without civility. If people are pushing and shoving and screaming and harassing, uh, if uh, uh, Maxine Waters gets her way, Constitutional lawyer Alan Dershowitz, a lifelong Democrat, caused a bit of a kerfuffle after complaining about being shunned by his Martha's Vineyard neighbors for defending President Donald Trump's civil liberties, an argument he makes in his new book. I don't care about being shunned. I don't care about not being invited to parties. What I care about is the big issue of trying to silence Americans who have a different point of view. President Trump encourages incivility by his name calling, by his mocking of people. The appropriate response to that is not incivility on the other side. What is it? Michelle Obama put it very well when she said, When they go low, we go high. Dershowitz argues that nothing about the current political climate justifies incivility. I'm nearly 80 years old. I've lived through many times, and every era, people say, in these times, this is special. In these times, they're detaining Japanese Americans in detention centers. In these times, there's segregation. If we allowed that to operate, the in these times approach, everything would be in these times. And we would live in a society of incivility. There is nothing special about these times. So what is it that we're actually seeing? Well, I think of it as a revolution in manners, but maybe a better way to describe it is a gerrymandering of the boundaries of polite society. Keith Bybee is a professor at the Syracuse University College of Law and author of How Civility Works. 
any period in American history where there's been intense political conflict, you can find severe breaches of etiquette. If you think it's bad today, consider the incident in 1856 when pro-slavery South Carolina Congressman Preston Brooks went into the Senate and beat Massachusetts Senator Charles Sumner, an ardent abolitionist, with his cane, nearly killing him. Now consider the civil rights movement more than a century later. The civil rights movement, in a fundamental way, led to the revision of our understanding of what constitutes appropriate behavior and the baseline of respect. The peaceful protests, often met with violent pushback, upended notions of civility and incivility as means to an end, as good or bad. Martin Luther King today is praised for a philosophy of nonviolence, and yet, at the time, what was considered civil disobedience civil protest was not considered civil at all. No, it was experienced by a number of people at the time as a gross incivility. I would characterize myself as a mainline Republican. Representative Steve Stivers. And I'm a strong, staunch Democrat. And Representative Joyce Beatty are members of Congress from the Columbus, Ohio area. 14 months ago now, um, I had a gentleman call and threaten to kill not just me, my wife, and my, at that time, seven-year-old daughter. It really made me think about, gee, the climate out there is driving folks across our country to the extremes. Every day we turn on TV and with social media, it has just been so prolific that it's in your face with Twitter and Instagram and all the things that are being said. But our children are listening to this. Beatty and Stivers are longtime friends, but on many issues, polar opposites politically. In January, they formed the Civility and Respect Caucus, pairing congressional Democrats and Republicans, 30 so far, to promote civility across the aisle and among high school students in each other's districts. The students are asked to take a civility pledge so are they ever saying, OK, we can take a civility pledge. What about you guys in Congress? I don't appreciate what was originally said being changed. I don't give a damn what you appreciate, Agent Strzok. Or is it, that's nice, that's sweet, but look around. Well, well Martha, a trip of a 1,000 miles begins with the first step. Does it all sound a little Pollyanna-ish? Their take? So what? This Civility and Respect Caucus will never cure incivility, what we hope to do is sensitize people to it. As long as I can add fresh breath to this Congress, I will never concede that nice people finish last. So does that mean there's hope? The very fact that we have people seeking to change civility, that's an expression of civility's value. A true crisis civility is none of us cared. If we all stopped caring about what counts as appropriate behavior, then civility is not a crisis, it's dead.